Hey guys, Lancer here. Hope everyone's doing well. Welcome back to Tuesday Commanders. So pretty much I'm going to go over the decks that I currently have. And in the future I'll go through decks that you guys want me to and other commander decks that I will be building as well. Currently I have about 12 commander decks that I sleeved up and play regularly or as often as I can. And in the future I'm going to probably have more. I'm going to shuffle them around. I don't think there's any reason to have too many commander decks. Plus I only buy one of each kind of really high value cards because I just don't want to go all in on anything which means my commander decks had to be a bit unique luckily they're also quite different because you know commander just allows that to happen so I want to go through my Atraxa deck now Atraxa itself is an amazing creature obviously pretty much broken if there's any easy way for me to actually highlight this is that any oh, really I can't just hover over her okay so uh, pretty much the biggest part is she allows you to proliferate any number of um, per, uh, co counters that are on a permanent and then she lets you add another one to them which means you can just kind of go crazy with counters I've gone for a plus one plus one counter because I wasn't a fan of infect myself and I wasn't too much of a fan of planeswalkers I have an idea for a planeswalkers that tracks a deck but I just wasn't a fan of her right now so there's a few things that this deck has trouble with, which I am still in the process of editing, but I wanted to go through what this deck does really well. It's got plenty of interactions. Almost half the creatures and a lot of the instant spells are removals or protection. That's really good. Another thing is that it's got a decent amount of card draw, especially when the engine keeps going. There is a couple of cards in here that can give you a lot of value for being one card. I will highlight those as well. I actually made this video twice. One of them was actually going through it as a side by side, but instead I've decided to go and run this as what I've done, what do you guys think I should probably fix in this deck? And I'll let you know what works well in a deck like this. The best part about a deck like this is the early drop creatures that you have. Walking Ballista, Machaeus, some of the Hooded Hydra is another one. These cards give you value all the time. Put a Hydra comes into play with X plus one plus one counters on it. When it dies, create one one green snake tokens for each plus one plus one counter on it. And you can morph it to put five counters on it when you morph it with five. That's fine. With Atraxa, with Ozolith, with other ways to double these things, that can easily become a 2020, which can create 20 one one tokens. It's very hard to remove. It's great in board sweepers because it just fills up the board and you can just put plus and plus and counters on all those creatures as well, as long as you have ways to do that and then proliferate up gain. Now, Ozolith is the newest card that I've added. A bit old now, I'm pretty sure there's a new one. Whenever a creature you control leaves the battlefield, if it had a counter on it, put those counters on Ozolith. At the beginning of your combat, on your turn, if, an, if the Ozolith has counters on it, you may move, the, move all the counters from Ozolith onto target creature. It doesn't say divide them, it says move them. Now, when you look at something like Doubling Season, it doesn't... I, I'm pretty sure Doubling Season and Ozolith don't interact. When you move 20 plus and plus and counters on it... Actually, you know what? I take that back. When No, this actually does. I've just never done it, which is crazy to think about. I've never had Doubling Season and Ozolith. It actually says if, a, if an effect would put one or more counters on the permanent control, it would put twice that many counters. Let me know, I'm pretty sure I can Google this, but if 20 counters are on Ozolith and then you move it onto a creature and doubling season's out, would that turn to 40 counters? I'll Google it later. Something I just thought about. Yeah, okay, so <clears throat> I'm getting off topic. Let's start with board sweeper protection as one of the most important things, again, in, in a creature-centric deck. Now, this is not really protection. Um... I have Nakira in here as a way to refill your hand. Whenever another creature you control leaves the battlefield, if it had one or more counters on it, you draw a card and you lose one life. But outside of that, I also have Tefari's Protection, of course, and Inspiring Call, just an amazing card. Both of these are great. Tefari's Protection phasing doesn't actually remove counters. It, it's weird. It keeps the counters on them. So it's actually amazing for that side. Another one is obviously all of the protection that you're going to be having. You're going to try to get creatures back again if you can. 
Wood Fall Primus is one of those cards where if you can get him onto the battlefield and then put a plus one plus one counter on him after he's died once, the minus one minus one counter and the plus one plus one counter cancel each other out, which means he can just continuously destroy a permanent, a non-creature permanent, whenever he comes into the field. It's a it's a really good card. Bane of Progress is actually a bit harsh because I actually have a few enchantments and artifacts. I'm not too sure if I should replace Bane of Project Progress with a more targeted removal. And the CMC for this entire deck is 3.22. My aim would be trying to get that down to about three if I can. So I'll continue with removal. So about three or four, uh, sorry, three protections to hand refills in case of a board wipe. Removals, pass to exile, pongify, go for the throat, ultimate price, beast within, dismember, and corrosion grip, along with woodfall primus, expensive, bane of progress, annoying triskelion, of course, uh, walking ballista, he, uh, walking ballista is actually really amazing in a deck like this, and do I have any others that I've thrown in here? Nope. It looks like those are the big ones. So that's around about 10 to 11. Not all of them are instantaneous, but they do allow build up and interact well with the deck. I've tried to go with the new command zone theory of 10 to 11 removals, uh, 10 to 12 removals or interactions. As for my card draw, now this is where it gets a bit tricky. These card draws are very focused on the fact that plus one, plus one counters come in. So you got Toothy, you got Fathom Mage, you got... Nakira, just in case of a board wipe. You have... I wish there was an easier way to see which one's... Uh, Prime Speaker. The Ghana. Uh, uh, nope. Oh, and Steelbane Hydra for removal. I have Nissa in here, just because she is this kind of a card draw slash scry engine. And she does allow you to like filter through the deck a bit. My lands don't really matter as much as you think. I got Demonic Tutor and Diabolic Tutor in here to just find more things. I got to Tooth and Isle here for the Triskelion and Methysda. Not Methysda. What's his name? Mephiz Mephi Mephidorus. The Vampire. The one that gives you plus one plus one whenever you uh, Triskelion deals damage to something. So that's for my combo, but that's just more of an instantaneous thing. Tetherit Gambit for my other card draw. So that's about 10 card draw spells. I feel like that's probably okay with two of an extra two being a tutor to make sure that I find my engines. I also have Congregation of Dawn, which is an amazing card if you can get it out early. You can set up your next three turns for creatures and you can even put mana docks out there because I actually have about four or five mana docks. Birds of Paradise, Finhorn, Gaia Sage, Incubation Druid. So, Tireless Tracker, Rickshaw. If you ever run into mana troubles, a card like this is actually quite amazing because you can just stack up your deck to make sure that you can get the right cards out. Even a Wood, Elf El a wood Elves allows you to get a ramp land into the field. So, it's a good combination. Mm, I only have one board wipe. Now, board wipes are tricky. I actually don't like to play too many of them because it just feels like the game drags on. But you guys can let me know if I don't have enough board wipes for this. I also feel like a deck like this feels very much slower, slower than a lot of other decks. An artifact deck can really roll over a deck like this unless you, you keep an eye on it and make sure that you get things like Bane of Progress. Then again, if you play a Bane of Progress, you end the game right there. So I guess the ga a deck like this allows you to keep coming back a bit more. Maldrotha is obviously the centric creature heavy deck, which allows you to just keep playing all of your permanents back over and over again and get a lot of attrition. But a, de a, a Traxa is really good just to make sure that you can beat your uh, opponents over the head with some massive creatures that don't start big at all. So uh, yeah, I'm not too sure what else I can say about it. What I wanted to make sure is when I covered my commander decks that you guys had an idea of what the cards were in there. But more importantly, if you had any ideas on any cards that you want, want me to try, 
sadly, me going through each card doesn't really help us much. So what I might do is I might make a little tiny one minute video where I just go through my deck and just record and put it up there alongside a video like this. The video that I did make before was to look into this deck and see what I can remove, adjust and take into consideration for upgrading because sometimes it puts up a good fight, sometimes it doesn't. But overall, I think this deck is probably as lean as you can get <clears throat> without me removing Bane of Progress, probably Ver uh, Gear Hulk. I probably can remove Bane of Progress, Gear, Gear Hulk, and maybe Woodfall Primus and put in three more cards, one of them being a removal, one being another ramp, and one being another card draw. And maybe I'll feel a bit better about a deck like this. It really doesn't take much to make a make or break a deck like this so maybe even 35 lands maybe i should add an extra one more land 36 lands but i'm going to call it that guys it's just a quick look at a commander deck that i have as it is right now and if you guys can figure out or let me know if you find these kinds of videos interesting or maybe i'll put up the next video that i've the previous video and see if you guys can help me with what this deck might be missing let me know and thanks again for watching this is a bit of a weird one let me know if you, there's any commanders that you want me to check out in the future as well and i will keep making deck techs as well when i have time for it thanks again and